Hey folks, welcome to Digimento Education. This is Analogs Electronics and Circuits Lecture 4. Hopefully, you must have gone through the last three lectures that I covered and, uh, well, and are well versed until now well versed with the concepts which I marked separately as important. Okay, let's begin with this lecture. So first I will request you to please uh, hit the like button if you really like this video. Share and subscribe to our channel and write down your comments below. Okay. Now, so we basically uh, ended our lecture, last lecture uh, with the, the discussion of uh, the V diode DC voltage. Now we are going to discuss about uh, the no load, no load output DC voltage when we take RL infinity or you can say that IDC is equal to zero. So since we are taking consider that DC, uh, we are performing the DC analysis in this case. So we, we have a look at the second part of the circuit where we have this. Okay, we are considering only one diode at a time, and we can say that uh, this RL tends to infinity, which means that IDC here is equal to zero. So since we are talking of DC, this the voltage present here, the voltage present here is purely AC. So we can say the voltage here is zero volts. This is a DC voltage across the second across the secondary winding of the transformer is equal to zero. So because the voltage because uh, that is uh, DC. So this is V diode DC, and this is will this will be equal to VDC NL no load. So if we apply the KVL here. So applying the KVL, if you just see, you get minus zero plus V diode DC plus V DC NL is equal to zero. So we can say that V DC NL is minus V diode V diode DC. So we get V DC NL. What was V diode minus two V M by pi? As we derived earlier in the last lecture, it will be equal to two V M by pi. So we can say VDC NL is 2 Vm by pi. This is the no load output voltage. Okay, this is no load output voltage. I think the okay it was the ninth point. Okay, understood. Now let's uh, discuss uh, the tenth point, uh, tenth sub, uh, sorry, tenth topic. It's basically full load output voltage full load output DC voltage full load output DC voltage which is VDC FL so VDC FL will be when VD, when RL is not equal to 0 okay when RL is not equal to 0 that's basically VDC FL is basically VDC or output voltage when RL is not equal to infinity neither it equal to 0 or we can say IDC is not equal to 0 so we get VDC FL is IDC into RL and is also equal to VDC NL minus IDC into R where R is equal to RF plus RSW by Two. Why RSW by two? Because we know the se for the secondary winding, since it is center tabbed, it is center tabbed. This is RSW. This portion will be RSW by two. This will be RSW by two. Okay. There will be a DC power dissipation across the secondary winding because the voltage is uh, a pure AC, but the current is not pure AC. There is uh, it, uh, a DC current is still flowing in that. Okay. So VDC FL will be equal to IDC into RL VDC NL minus IDC into R or you can write VDC FL is IDC into RL VDC NL is 2 Vm by pi minus IDC into R. We can basically approximate it to uh, a Thevenin equivalent where v, the 2 Vm by pi is VTH and R is basically your RTH. Okay, this will be equal to IDC into R is output voltage. 
okay so this is the, how it goes so we are considering it for me only for one diode the other is true the, this expression is also true for the uh, for the other diode okay now regulation factor next one is a regulation factor regulation factor so this was this video this is a regulation factor we define the regulation factor as vdc nl minus vdc fl upon vdc fl so it will the expression will remain the same so percentage regulation so percentage regulation will be equal to r upon rl into 100 percent but the major difference being the only difference being r is equal to rx w by 2 plus rf okay this is the percentage regulation this is what it uh, now second the next one is basically the the thevenin equivalent of the circuit we have then the thevenin equivalent thevenin equivalent of the circuit so this is how it represents the thevenin equivalent so thevenin equivalent so we know this is vdc fl is 2 vm by pi minus idc into r okay so this will be equal to v thevenin and this will be equal to r thevenin so we can approximate this thing to this circuit so this will be v thevenin this is r thevenin and this is a load resistance rl okay this is vdc fl vdc fl this is idc this is r thevenin r thevenin which is equal to r in this case and this is v thevenin v thevenin which is 2 vm by pi so this is basically thevenin equivalent of a full wave rectifier or a center tap full wave rectifier this is how it looks this is how it looks okay this is the thevenin equivalent circuit of the full wave rectifier now let's discuss about the peak inverse voltage because this is important peak inverse voltage as we already discussed should be as small as possible so that uh, because if we have to uh, peak inverse voltage should be uh, should be as small as possible so as not to let the voltage go beyond a particular uh, the particular designed uh, voltage particular limited voltage of a diode so that the diode does not get damaged okay so otherwise if peak inverse voltage is greater is very very high you require a high breakdown voltage while a uh, diode which is uh, costly which is also costly so peak inverse voltage should be should be as small as possible that should lie between the breakdown voltage and zero region okay that's one thing that we have to keep in mind when the discussion is peak inverse voltage which we define as piv so peak inverse voltage is the maximum uh, maximum inverse voltage of a diode across a diode so we know that piv is v diode maximum okay this was 2 vm sin alpha maximum value this will be equal to 2 vm so piv is large is larger than half wave rectifier okay so this is important so we cannot this is not suitable for uh, for this is not suitable the, the so the design of uh, center tap full wave rectifier is not suitable with the uh, with the diodes having the breakdown voltage less than 2 vm okay so this is a basically a major drawback you can see it's a 2 vm which is higher than the half wave rectifier so there are some limitations there are some advantages of uh, full wave rectifier over half wave rectifier and vice versa based on those concepts we will basically move on to the uh, uh, center uh, the, move on to the bridge rectifier bridge bridge full wave rectifier which basically nullifies all the which basically nullifies all the limitations of uh, begin of uh, full wave center tap full wave rectifier and half wave rectifier which takes care of all the pro all the problems okay that we shall discuss uh, in the coming in the forthcoming sessions
of the lecture okay so the 14th point of discussion is so greater piv means uh, is a dis disadvantage the greater disadvantage so you can say it's a disadvantage it's a disadvantage of sand attack full wear rectifier we'll discuss about the form factor which is defined by f so we define a form factor as now form factor is defined uh, as we already know it is defined by irms by idc where ripple factor is defined as irms dash by idc this is a total so irms for this is equal to im by root 2 upon idc being 2 im by pi so if you solve for this you get f as 1.11 okay so this uh, form vector value was 1.57 in the case of uh, half wave rectifier and ripple factor was 1.21 so here the ripple factor has reduced uh, by a drastic change there is a drastic change in the half in the ripple factor in the full wave rectifier as compared to the half wave rectifier because it is equal to 0 0.483 in the full wave rectifier and is equal to 1.21 in the half wave rectifier form factor is also reduced it was 1.57 and it is now 1.11 okay now there are the major differences that you should know and you should be able to point out now next point of discussion is uh, frequency of the of the output voltage So basically, if we uh, for the if we basically represent uh, the if we basically represent the output signal in terms of its Fourier series expansion, so we get so we get V naught. It is basically two V m by pi minus four V m by pi summation k being even cos k omega naught t upon k plus 1 into k minus 1 this is how you represent this is basically your dc this is basically your ac while that was equal to vm by pi vm by pi plus vm by 2 sin omega naught t minus 2 vm by pi summation k being even cos k omega naught t upon k plus 1 into k minus 1 in case of half wave rectifier and this is this 2 vm by pi minus 4 vm by pi cos k omega naught t so the minimum frequency uh, minimum fundamental the minimum frequency present in the uh, in the expression is basically 2 so if k is even so we cannot basically place 0 in this case because cos 0 is already 1 and that is already our dc value so if we just the minimum value being cos 2 omega naught t upon 2 minus 1 upon 2 plus 1 so the minimum fundamental frequency the fundamental fundamental or ripple frequency ripple frequency in this thing is 2 omega naught or 2 f naught okay and time period being T naught by two. Understood. So, so AC component basically consists of harmonics because this is the output is not sinusoidal. Okay. So, due to so in this case, since uh, frequency is 2 omega naught filtering becomes easier filtering of the output becomes easier since frequency has been doubled it is 2 omega naught so that's why frequency it is easier to filter the output signal so if the if we basically neglect the higher uh, frequency components if we neglect 
neglecting higher frequency components so we get v naught as 2 vm by pi minus 4 vm upon 3 pi cos 2 omega naught t we can approximate this thing to this okay so we can represent a full wave rectifier with this small circuit without even considering all other parameters we can just replace it with one dc voltage and one ac voltage and then we can calculate whatever you want to calculate okay this is how it looks 2 vm by pi upon 4 vm upon 3 pi cos 2 minus so we can say a center tabbed full wave rectifier is approximated approximated to a series combination of a DC and AC voltages okay we can consider this thing so how can we represent it we can represent it with a DC and an AC voltage okay and we can take the output voltage here so this is VDC which is 2 Vm by pi which is DC AC being 4 Vm upon 3 pi cos 2 omega naught T so this is how it looks this is how it will look okay so this is basically the equivalent equivalent of full wave rectifier okay. now next point of discussion is uh, the angle of conduction angle of conduction angle of conduction so angle of conduction is basically the 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 uh, the period for which your diode conducts the period for which your diode conducts and it will conduct only if the voltage crosses the cut in voltage of the diode we are not considering the uh, we are not considering an ideal diode we are considering a practical diode and we are only considering uh, your gamma value v gamma so it will only conduct it when your input voltage crosses your uh, gamma which is cut in voltage so if we just say if the diodes are ideal so if the diodes are ideal so we have to basically consider uh, consider both diodes in this scenario so let me let me explain to you if we if the diodes are ideal each diode each diode conducts for 180 degree conducts for 180 degree so total total conduction angle will be 360 degree okay while if if non ideal diodes are considered then each diode conducts for 180 degree minus 2 theta angle so total conduction angle will then be 360 degree minus 4 theta so if you just have a look at VA it's something like this and VB it's just the negative of it okay so when VA crosses this particular V gamma this is V gamma this is also V gamma this is for this is VB this is corresponding diode D1 this is corresponding to diode D2 this is alpha this is alpha so this angle is theta this angle is 180 minus theta and VB conducts for this this is theta this is basically 360 minus theta okay 
this will be 360 minus theta so if we consider all the angles this is 180 minus 2 theta this is also this thing so 180 minus if we just solve for this we get 360 minus 4 theta understood this is how it goes this is theta this is 180 let's say theta okay we are considering theta here this is 180 plus theta and this is 360 minus 180 plus theta okay so if we just consider so this is basically 180 minus 2 theta this is also 180 minus 2 theta this is basically 180 plus theta this is 360 minus so you can say it is 360 minus 180 plus theta you get 180 minus 2 theta and the total angle uh, conduction angle being 360 minus 4 theta where theta where theta is sign inverse v gamma by vm okay so your d1 conducts for 180 minus from theta to 180 minus theta and d2 conducts for 180 plus theta to 360 360 minus theta okay make a change here this is 360 minus theta so this is how it looks 180 plus theta with the total and the conduction angle being 360 minus 4 theta now next point of discussion is uh, transformer utilization factor tuf 17 point is tuf or the transformer utilization factor tough factor so transformer utilization factor is basically the ratio of uh, ac uh, a ratio of uh, the DC output power to input AC power rating of the secondary transformer secondary winding of the transformer so we can say we just have a look at this that uh, full wave rectifier is a combina combination of two half wave rectifier therefore tuf tough with respect to secondary winding secondary winding will be double to that of half wave rectifier so you can say the tuf for second with respect to secondary winding will be 0 2 into 0 0.286 rl divided by rl plus rf is equal to 0 0.572 rl by rl plus rf okay so we can say that tough or secondary winding it is equal to 0 0.572 rl divided by rl plus rf but so if we just find out the tough with respect to primary winding if we find it with respect to the primary winding so we can define with respect to the primary winding as dc output power divided by AC power rating of primary winding so it is equal to IDC square into RL now AC power rating it is equal to VM by root 2 into IM by root 2 okay this will come out to be IDC square into RL VM IM by 2 okay so basically it is VM1 IM1 
this will be equal to vm im because we know that vm1 im1 will be equal to vm im this is uh, across the primary winding and since the turns ratio will cancel each other turns ratio will cancel each other so vm im1 vm1 vm1 im1 is equal to vm im okay so vm1 and im1 will be equal to vm im so we can write if we plug in the values the tough with respect to the primary winding will be equal to 0.81 rl divided by rl plus rf so we can say average tough will be equal to 0.572 plus 0.81 divided by 2 is equal to 0.69 so average tough for a standard tapped half wave full wave rectifier is 0.69 again this is uh, most important with respect to ies exam okay so yeah now the next point of discussion now uh, let's now discuss about some of the advantages and disadvantage of a Uh, disadvantages of uh, full wave rectifiers so let's discuss first about the advantages of it okay so yeah first one it has smaller ripple factor smaller ripple factor or you can say suppressed ac ripples more seamless more smooth dc with respect uh, uh, compared to uh, a yeah, half wave rectifier second one it has greater efficiency because the efficiency of a full wave rectifier is uh, double to that of of a half wave rectifier it is 81% maximum efficiency is 81% when we consider the ideal diodes third greater dc output current and voltage because we know that vdc fl in this case vdc fl is 2 vm by pi minus idc into rs w by 2 plus rf and the half wave rectifier was vm by pi so we can say vdc fl greater dc output voltage okay and uh, similarly your idc your uh, output current which is 2 im by pi it is double to that in the case of half wave rectifier so greater dc output current and current and voltage fourth point filtering of ac component is easier in the full wave rectifier because fundamental frequency fundamental frequency is not present or cancel by rectifier okay and it has greater tough Understood. So, because the frequency here is uh, two mega naught, so filtering is more uh, seamless uh, as compared to that in the case of uh, of a half wave rectifier. Now, let's have a look uh, at the dis disadvantages of uh, of a center tad full wave rectifier. There are always uh, Okay the first one is greater PIV or diodes with higher breakdown voltages are needed or you can say diodes with the higher breakdown voltages are needed which is uh, of course a major drawback because a uh, greater piv means if we use a 
if we use the diodes with the if we use the cheaper diodes or that or we or we can say if we use the diodes with the lesser breakdown voltage cannot be a greater piv in okay cannot be a greater piv and that could basically damage the diodes so obviously we require diodes with a greater p greater breakdown voltage voltages which are of course uh, costlier than the uh, than the than the counterparts second one it is necessary it is necessary to use center tabbed transformer transformer which is bigger in size bigger in size and costlier too okay so above disadvantages are basically are nullified in the case of bridge rectifier okay now let's move on so this was in a, this was for uh, this is enough for the this, uh, this is enough for uh, the center tab full wave rectifier now is the time to start a new topic of discussion it's a bridge rectifier okay there are many properties that we need to understand uh, of a bridge rectifier and we shall discuss about we shall discuss all the advantages all the properties of bridge rectifier and how it basically supersedes the center tread uh, full wave rectifier okay so the basic uh, diagram of the connection diagram of a bridge rectifier looks like this this is pure ac signal okay this is basically step down transformer is n1 is to n2 now this okay so you should be careful with the diagram of a bridge rectifier it is like this so Just draw it so that it is more clearer to you. This connection is here, and this connection is like this. Okay, this is R L. This is V O. This is vi this is a, uh, this is basically a step down transformer where you can see that n1 is greater than n2 okay this is the output voltage taken and this is how it this is how a bridge rectifier looks it's again a full wave rectifier bridge full wave rectifier how it works let me explain you the operation okay so if we just have a quick look at the waveforms this is alpha this is alpha this is vi and here it is vo so let me draw this thing so your input voltage basically varies like this okay but and your output will be will be like this it's again a full wave rectifier it's basically a pulsating dc okay it's basically a pulsating dc it's a pulsating dc this is zero this is pi 2 pi 3 pi pi this is 0 pi 2 pi 3 pi and 4 pi now 
case 1 when alpha lies between 0 and pi let let us just quickly discuss discuss the operation of a bridge rectifier when alpha lies between 0 and pi what happens when alpha lies between 0 and pi vi is positive vi is positive since vi is positive let me basically demarcate these diodes as uh, uh, this is d1 this is let's say d2 this is uh, d3 and this is d4 so when in the uh, when alpha lies between 0 and pi what happens that vi will be positive since vi is positive your diode d1 your diode d1 and d3 will be forward biased and will be short circuited while your d4 and d2 will be reverse biased so we can say that uh, in this case vi is positive so you can say that d1 and d3 are forward biased while d2 and d4 are reverse biased this is open circuited and this is these are short circuited okay so we can say that the current flows in this particular loop so this is, this is short circuited the current flows like this so current flows uh, occur through a loop consisting of d1 rl and d3 so it the current flows like this 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 is how the current flows so current will flow like this you can say the current flow will be like this like this this is how the current will flow so current flows current flows in the loop consisting of d1 d3 and r okay so the current direction will be this is the direction of the current for the first case now if we consider another case the other case case 2 case 2 when alpha lies between 2 pi and pi when alpha lies between pi and 2 pi what what is in this case so if we just quickly have a look let me write it with green in this case vi is negative and in this case d2 and d4 are forward biased your d1 and d and d3 are reverse biased they are open circuited and they are short circuited so the current basically flows in the loop so in this case your d4 d4 and d2 will be forward biased okay okay so the current flow will be like this okay so if you keenly observe if you keenly observe that the current flows like this in the for the second case and current flows in the opposite direction to this current in as in the as in the first case okay this is for the second case this is for the this is for the first case and this is for the second case so we can clearly observe we can clearly observe here we can clearly observe that both the currents are basically opposite in direction opposite to each other hence we can conclude that through the transformer through the secondary winding of the transformer there will also be an ac current flowing there is no dc current flowing okay there will not be any dc current that will flow across the secondary winding of the transformer because both the currents are basically opposite in the direction to each other they have a phase shift of 180 degrees so net current is basically an ac signal is an ac current so if we would consider if we consider your uh, when we when we will consider your uh, total internal voltage drop which is idc into r and we used to write r is equal to rsw by 2 plus rf in the case of center tight fold rectifier because there we considered that there will be a dc power dissipation across the secondary winding because a dc current also flows through the 
secondary vanular transformer but here in this case there is no dc current flow that will flow across the secondary winding so we will take rsw equal to 0 so from here we can conclude that so uh, let me just write it here that uh, current current flows in the loop consisting of consisting of d1 d3 sorry it's uh, d2 d4 and rl understood so current from here you can say current through secondary winding current through the secondary winding is bidirectional bidirectional or ac okay current through rl is unidirectional it is unidirectional or pulsating dc pulsating dc because it always because it always flows in one direction or downward direction you can say okay so as we had already uh, as we already saw the current flowing both directions you can say is in the downward direction so current flow is always in the downward direction across the resistance rl so that will always be a there will be a dc component present at the load resistance rl okay so that's all folks i am stopping this lecture here uh please go through uh, all the concepts that i covered uh, thoroughly and be well versed with them thank you very much and please if you really like this video please hit the like button and share and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for the latest updates Thank you very much.